Hi everyone, my name is Ron Leite and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today, we'll be continuing the XML part 2 in Autrix Designer. This is part 2 of the XML and if you haven't checked out the first video, please make sure to watch it first. Now, in the example here, we are continuing the last part where we stopped by dealing with nested XML. We have the clinical study file here, where we have many different names and conventions for the nested childs. And now we are going to extract the data with two types of extraction. First, we are going to extract the data treating individual blocks but all at once. In the last video, we treated the blocks individually, so we have one line for each block. Now you can see that we have a series of XML parse tools, then we just have that ending part, where we had a transpose, a select, a data cleansing, and then we remove the empty values. I run the workflow here, so just so we can see. So, we have the root childs. What this does is, I'm getting the root here, and the return child values. This will give me the 16 first values for the childs that don't have any other grandchild or any other level in them. So I'll get the source, I'll get the brief title, I'll get the overall status, the face, and some other informations. Now, if I want to get the information inside required header, I have to use the specific child name, the return child values, and just type here what child I want. This will be the default configuration for all of the following tools. What changes is that the required header has the name here, the ID info has the name here, but inside sponsors, we are not using sponsors, we are using lead sponsor. And why is that? If you check here inside required header or ID info, the information is included in those childs here, which is just one more level from the previous information. If we check the sponsors, we have one child and then we have a grandchild here. So we need to get the information from the lead sponsor and not just the sponsor. If I had type and their sponsors, I will have an information in blank, like you can see here. This example here is the perfect example. Sponsors is in blank. Brief summary, I just have to type here. It will get the text block as it is the only child. And uh, detailed descriptions, the same things, the design, intervention, eligibility. Now here we have two ways of working. Inside eligibility, you can go down here, let me find it here. We have eligibility criteria and we have gender, minimum age, maximum age and healthy volunteers. If we check what the result here gives us, we have all the information that is a first child but criteria is in blank because criteria has another child called text block. So if you want to get that text block information, we have to add the criteria here. It won't be showing for now because we have new lines and we have some enters, but the information is inside this block. Let me see if you can show it. Yes, here. So the information is inside the block here. After we cleanse the data, it will be easier to see this information. Let me remove the cell here. Now, for the location, it's the same thing. Location has the facility and then we have the name. And here happens, and here we can see another case where we will have to analyze the address separately. So we have the location facility and then the address. I don't have to type location slash facility slash address. Just, I just documented it this way to make sure to be easier to read where is the information coming from. Then location countries, condition browse, intervention browse. Here 
I have a trace pose tool where I select the field one to group the data and everything else will become rows. The select just removes the first field, I won't be using it. The cleanse here removes extra spaces for everything that is in the text file. And then I remove everything that's empty because I don't want this information here, it's not usable for me at all. And here in the true value I'll get the 46 lines I have. In the last video I spoke about those 46 lines, we have actually 44 lines with texts and then two extra lines where we have the type of the information down here, so 46 in total. But this is still some very big way of doing the work. How can we make it better? I will deactivate this container and activate the one down here. Now, this container is very small, it's just a macro that's running behind here. And what this does is, it runs every single time until we get all the information we want. So here we have 46 lines, which is the information we need, but we only have one block. Now, what's behind this? If I open here the XML break macro, you'll see how it works. So we have an input, and in this input I put here the example we are using later, just to, so we could see what's running. Let me run the workflow. Here we are breaking the root and getting the child values and also the return outer XML. And why is that? We want to make sure that we are getting the information we want. If we check that the child value is blank, it means that there's still information to be retrieved from that column or that data. If it, the child value is not blank, like for example here in the brief title, I already have the information, so I don't need to break it down again, because then I would have duplicate lines. So we are getting both lines here. I use the transpose tool just to make things better to read. I cleanse the data, then I remove duplicate content. And how do I do that? If I check here in the step before the filter, I have the clinical study here, I have the clinical study here, and it's blank. If I go to the last line, I have clinical study, I have the outer XML of clinical study, and then the clinical study itself. Those two informations are the same information. If I don't do this, the iteration on the macro will never end, it will run and run and run over and over again because we will be including the original data back into the workflow. So we have to add this step here. Next I'll be removing the first field because I won't be needing it anymore. Then I get what's not empty because this doesn't serve any purpose and I'll have the, this information here which are 42 lines. So I have the outer XMLs and the titles or the childs that I'll have already have the information. Here I'll separate what's already parsed, so I already have this information here, those are 16 lines, and then what's left to parse. Now if we check here as I said before, brief title, I already parsed it, but if I check in here, brief title is inside here. So I have to make sure I remove this, otherwise I'll have the information duplicated in my final result. How can I do this? I use the formula just to remove the outer XML from the name, then I use a join tool. The join tool is using the name from the files, and here you can see in the J exit that the brief title is already in both parts, but in the value that's parsed up here, and in the value that's not parsed here, I won't be needing this information. So what I get as a result is just the right side here, because the right side will represent what still needs to be parsed inside my XML file. Here I'll change the value field to field1 and remove the name, why is that? I want to make sure the template is the exact same thing as my input here. So my input is field1 and then I have the data, and here I'll have field1 and the data. It doesn't matter that I have more lines, I just have to make sure it's in the same format and in in, has the same name. And here is 
the data that still needs to be parsed and inside Alteryx it will go and run the workflow this many times and every time it runs the parse data will be outputted in this. Now how do I configure this iterative macro? I can come here in workflow, select macro, change it to iterative macro, then I can come here to view, interface designer, options, and I'll put the macro input here as my input, it's input 33, and then I'll use the output, this one down here, as my macro output, which is output 73. Here I'll let the number of maximum iterations at 100, which is default. I'll have the output left over records and auto configure by position, as the exit here will have the exactly same result for every iteration. Now here you can see that the macro has a different name, but we are using the input name down here, okay? Not the one up here. And here is the same thing. We're using this name here. Let me go back to the workflow, I won't be saving anything. Then inside here, if I had the workflow open, let me just open it again. I can just right click, insert, macro, and it will, it will show me the macro I have. So that's how you can run the XML parse tool inside Alteryx Designer. If you have any questions regarding the parse tool, you can also come here, let me just bring it one down, click on the help question here and Alteryx will open the website where you can see all the information and also you can check how Alteryx reads and parses XML files inside this link here. Here you'll see many informations regarding what exactly each specific configuration does and how Alteryx will read and parse the data. Thanks for watching, have a great day! If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching!